In today's video, I got a Z Grills 2021 pellet grill and I'm gonna do the unboxing, the assembly and burn off on this blind box limited edition special. So grab your razor knife and a bag of pellets, Eric. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. Z Grills has been in the pellet grill industry for a long time and I'm guessing that a bunch of you people didn't even know it. Now this limited edition blind box pellet grill promotion is only gonna last for a certain amount of time so make sure that you check the links below if you're interested in getting a pellet grill for $400. And it even has a PID controller and if you know anything about pellet grills, you know that the best ones out there are gonna have a PID controller. Now there's five different models in this blind box. I'm hoping that I'm getting the one that's worth $679, but I got the luck of the Irish. I got the potato famine luck, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe I strike gold. Let's get the business and see how lucky I am. You know, like always, I have a 50-50 chance that I have the front of this grill facing me. No. Oh and I never get it right. I'm just gonna safely cut this box right in the front. Peel her right open. Now we've got our gloves. This will help protect your hands. You know what they say, if it don't fit, you gotta quit, but it fits. Good job, Z Grills, because I got big paws. And here we go, let's see what we've got. We have the 600 2B3. Simple installation instructions. I don't think this is gonna take me very long to put together, but heck yeah, we got the 602 b 3 They even send you some cool stickers. My guess inside this box is gonna be our grates. And of course, I have it turned the wrong direction. That's easy enough, we'll just spin it right around. Get our lid out of here. Nice color for sure. Thinking there's gonna be a bunch of hardware in here. Looks like a shelf and some other stuff. Can say that it's packed very well. This is gonna be a side shelf. In these boxes, we've got some more legs. We got a wheel and we got some hardware. And if you look at this, they even send you a screwdriver and a wrench to put it together. Good job, Z Grills, because a lot of people don't actually have any tools in their garage. We got a grease pal. It's a mini one, but they at least send you some nice little liners. I got another wheel and some more legs. Get this box open up, see what's in here. We got our dampener and it looks like we got our little fire pot right here. Watch out for the grease on that one box. Have yourself a paper towel and if you don't have one already, get yourself a FOD. Check the links below. We've got our hopper and it's a small one, but for all of you that are just starting to think about getting into pellet grills and you don't want to invest a lot of money, this could be a good chance for you. And we'll get our last box out. In this box, you're gonna have some hardware, you're gonna have some handles, your cover, for your smokestack and a bottle opener. Now all we got left is just the main cooking chamber. Before I get into the assembly, this is a great time to talk about the Dead Broke Barbecue Nation. And I wanna thank all the people that support Dead Broke Barbecue with my Patreons and my join button. And after you get done watching this video, it's a perfect time to go over to Facebook and join the Dead Broke Barbecue Nation. Good time, there's a lot of great cooks in there and a lot of people sharing and inspiring other people to cook more. First step is to go ahead and get out some of these A bolts or A screws, whatever you wanna call them. And then you're gonna start with the legs. Move this out of the way because we're actually gonna start putting, let's say the cart together first with the legs. I will say one nice thing that Z Grills does is that they are marking the legs so you know front, back, right, left. Start out with these end caps and get them on the legs right away. They just kind of fit right in between that plastic. Get them in, there you go. And these legs are for the left-hand side of the pit. And again, just get her kind of lined up, and get them in. Not too hard, just gotta kind of wiggle it and you'll get it. Grab your shelf and you're gonna wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the legs that you're mounting. And on this shelf, you'll see some grooves. And to line it up, just go ahead and put it on there and you're gonna slide it in like that. And then now, we'll go ahead and put on a screw. This one, I'm just gonna hang it right off the edge like this and we'll just screw it in. Repeat with the other one. Get that one in. The nuts, they're already welded onto this little plate as they call it, or the bottom shelf. After you get them all finger tight, go ahead and take your screwdriver and lock them in. Now with the legs that have the wheels, make sure that the hole, you're gonna have one side with two holes. Make sure that that bigger hole is on the outside 
of that shelf. Put on our axle, I went ahead and put my cap nut on first. On the wheel itself, you see the concave part? That's where you're gonna wanna put your cap nut so it ends up being flush. Get the bolt through on this side. Same thing, make sure that your wheel is going on this direction. If not, you won't get your cap nut on. Here's where you're gonna use your little wrenches that they provide you to go ahead and tighten up those cap nuts. They are self-locking, so that's gonna help it. Just get them good and snug. You're not gonna wanna tighten them too much because it's really gonna lock those wheels into place and it's gonna be harder to pull this around. Get this turned, put our chamber right on top. Just like that. Careful that you don't wiggle it around a lot because it will fall off. Just kind of keep some pressure on it, hold it in place, get a couple of your screws and get them started. We'll come back and crank them in later. This really isn't hard at all to do. Got them all tight, I'm just gonna get this off the table. And our next step is we're gonna go ahead and put the hopper together. Time to put our hopper lid on and our hopper handle. Open up this little hinge first so you can line this up. Take this little C-screw and put it right through the hinge and you're just going to line it up on the hopper itself. Get it through there. Take this little lock nut and get it right on that screw and then repeat on the other side. Take your screwdriver and go ahead and tighten them up. Now put on your hopper handle and we'll just get that one started right here. Get this one on. Roll my table out of the way and we'll finish the rest of this right in front of the spotlight. Put on our hopper and you make sure that you locate your RTD plug. It's a male adapter. Now this is gonna be hard for you to see, but I just connected that RTD right to the one that's on here. And you're gonna actually wanna take this igniter, get that in here. Gonna line up your auger and you are gonna smush this cable together. Now you're just gonna take your A's and you're gonna get these lined up. You're gonna have to squeeze it together and then just start screwing these in too. Now it's actually not as hard as it looks. Once you have it up there and you have it lined up, they go in pretty easy. And then just take your screwdriver, and tighten them up. I'm putting on my Z-Grill gloves right now because I'm gonna skip up to number seven and put that fire pot in because I wanna get that done out of the way. The next step is to actually just go ahead and put the chimney on. I wanna get this dirtier part and in inside the pit or the chamber done first. Just grab your fire pot or your burn box as they call it and we're just gonna set it right in here. Take your igniter rod, get that through there and you can see the screws. You're just gonna get that up in here tight and line it up, get them started and then just repeat with the other three. Now it's time to go ahead and mount our hot rod to our fire pot. Put this little pot a little catch in here and you just get this thumb screw, get that on there and get that tight. Now just go ahead and put on your grease lip kind of a pan. This is what's going to hold your grease catch and we'll just get these nice and snug on here too. Now you can go ahead and take off your Z-Grill gloves because you ain't going to get that oily anymore. Now I'm going back to four and I'm going to put on my chimney so grab some G-bolts and some K-nuts and make sure you have your gasket in place and just stick it right through. Hold the chimney tight and then just take your nuts and go ahead and put them on. Now grab your wrenches and tighten it up snug. You'll start hearing that gasket squeeze in. It's just made of fiberglass. It kind of sounds like air coming out of something. And of course, we got to put on our cap. That's always fun. Give her a spin. Add your side table. This is real simple. All you got to do is just start your first two top ones. Take your side table and hang it right from them too. And take your other two nuts and just get them in here. This is a very important part for all barbecuers. You gotta have a beer bottle opener added to your pit. These are smaller screws, obviously. And it's pre-threaded, so that's really a nice feature. Then we add our utensil hooks or hangers. Those pre-threaded also. Put on our lid, but we have to get these hinges set. Just take this pin, get the, through there, and then get the cotter pin in it, and it'll just make it a little easier when you go ahead and mount them. Get your bolts through. This one started. Get them in a little bit, but we're not gonna snug them down yet. Now, after you get them all finger tight, go ahead and give them a quarter turn. Now, I'm adding a handle. You're supposed to do it the step earlier, but it's easier now that the lid is actually mounted. I don't have to sit there and hold it and try to mess around. On this side of the pit, we wanna start because this side, the hole's slotted. You have a little bit more room, and then we're gonna use our wrench to snug it firm. It's good. There's our lid. 
Now we're gonna put in our grease drain support or bottom support and I put my gloves back on. Your two holes are gonna go towards the back side. Time for our grease drain pan. We're gonna put this little spindle. This is so you can go ahead and start doing some actual searing. So once this is opened up, the flames are gonna come right through there. Now you'll see that there's this little lip right here. Put it in and that's gonna hang right from that lip. And then we can just go ahead and close this up. Put in our racks, these in. We got a double one for the bottom and then like a three quarter size one for our warming rack. And that just goes in also. We gotta hang our grease pail and put a liner inside of it and you're gonna use this little hook and just go ahead and hang your little pail right from there. There's our assembly part of the Z Grills 600 2B3. Next, we're gonna do the burn off. Finally time for us to do the burn off and that just means we're gonna start it up and we wanna burn off all of those impurities from the machining process. You know, we gotta burn off that oil that we didn't get on our hands because we got these Z-Girl gloves. Yes, we just put these in, but let's take them back out. And we wanna take out our drip pan because we wanna expose this fire pot. We wanna make sure that we see what's going on inside. Now, one thing that I always do on these pellet grills or any other type of grills that have that styrofoam packing material, because once you start pulling it off, they leave little pieces in the corners and all that, but I grab my lead blower and I blow out that chamber. Blast it out. I know you saw all that stuff blow out of there. This works great. Get yourself one. I'll put a link in the description below. Grab the electrical cord and plug it in. We'll take off our little warning tag that says please read the instruction manual carefully before using this controller. I read it. Now my crew left me and I'm filming by myself, so I'm gonna have to run the gimbal. But we're just gonna turn it on and we're gonna turn it to smoke. Feel down inside the fire pot for some air and I can feel that. And we're gonna watch that hot rod to see if it starts turning red. See the struggles that I go through when I'm making videos? Now if I block off my spotlight, I think you'll see that it's starting to glow red. So that means our hot rod is in service. Now after you've checked all that, they want you just to turn it to the shutdown cycle. And before I dump in any pellets, I wanna make sure that my auger is turning. Then once we confirm that, then we're gonna add some. And I can see in here that auger moving, so it's working. It's time for some pellets. Today's burn off, I'm using some Lumberjack Competition Blend. This doesn't have the biggest hopper, but that's not a big bad deal. Now they're already starting to fall in there. Turn it to the shutdown cycle. It cycled off again and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually fire this thing up. They want you to stop it after it starts to ignite and go into the cool down again. I'm gonna skip that. I think that's for people that might not be aware that it's hot and they wanna make sure that you're putting things back together in a cooler chamber. Once this thing starts to burn, then we're gonna put back in our grates and our heat deflector slash grease pan but we're getting some more pellets to pop on there and it's landing right on that hot rod now i can smell it i just can't see it yet now it's starting to smoke up i can see it starting to roll out of there because we've got a little bit of a fire in here right now and it's time to go ahead button this baby up and let it cook for a while now it's a nice little quiet pit these fans ain't screaming at me and when you have this really dirty smoke, make sure you leave this lid open until it starts burning clean. Let's go ahead and get our heat deflector in. Get our grates in. Our warming rack. And I am gonna spray the chamber down with a little bit of canola oil because we want to start to season it up. Now I know they talked a little bit about that you can go ahead and put aluminum foil over this heat deflector but I'm not going to. Now I'm gonna run this on smoke for about 15 minutes and then I'll bring it back. My 15 minute timer went off. I'm gonna turn it up to 275 degrees because I like to slow bake that paint. Yeah, it's powder coated, but I've seen other pellet grills start to peel because they turned them up too quick, too fast. I've always felt that it's smarter to just go ahead and slowly bring up those temperatures instead of hitting it full blast right out of the gate. So we just turn it right up to 275. And now I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes and then we'll check back and then 
we're gonna turn it up to high. This is what I look at the whole time for some of you people that are always interested. That's R2Y2, huh? Lights, lights, cameras, hard hat. Gotta show you a quick behind the scenes. My 15 minute timer run off, let's go ahead and turn it up to high. And that's gonna bring this pit up to 450 degrees and we're gonna run it for at least 30 minutes and then I'll bring it back and we'll do the cool down or the shutdown cycle. My 30 minute timer went off, so it's time to enter into the shutdown cycle on this 600 2B3. And you'll see right here, it says shutdown cycle. So we'll just turn it right over to there. And now it's gonna go into a 10 minute cool down. The auger stops and it's burning off what's in that fire pot. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that once you start that high temperature, you're gonna see a lot more smoke because that oil from the machining process is gonna start to burn off. So don't panic, that's normal. But let's go ahead and open it up and see what she looks like. Oh yeah, we got a nice dark patina on that heat deflector or grease tray. Now my thoughts on the blind box, I think it's worth it. And I am pretty surprised how good this little Z grill runs. The 602B3 is $500 and the blind box, well it's 400, so this one, I saved a hundred bucks. Full disclosure, Z Girls did send me this pellet girl, but I'm gonna tell you, it was packaged great. I was surprised how well they did with it. Number two, I thought the assembly went pretty good. It took me about an hour and 15 minutes. Number three, the burn off, it went slick. I started it up and it ran and did its job. The other thing I gotta say, it didn't do too bad on pellets. On this pit, there's not a tremendous amount of room, but you can get a couple pork butts in here. You can do a couple racks of ribs. So for you people that are just cooking for two, I think it's right up your alley. This doesn't have a very big footprint. It's got two shelves, that's always a bonus and it's quiet. I could hear the auger turning, but it wasn't making hardly any noise. And there, we are done. Our shutdown is complete. But we're not complete yet. I didn't cook anything, but we still gotta put it to work. There we go, a nice cold beer. Roll the nation. Oh, we do that first. Okay, well then we'll just slide this over. I'll just slide it over. We'll just start putting that on. You know, I think I covered everything, but you know, when you wing it, what do you expect? But when I start editing, of course, I'm like, oh, you forgot again. But let me see, $3.99, free shipping, started already, links in the description, good pit, save some money, mini models, you never know, you're a winner.